Hey there, welcome back to JavaScript Bytes, the series where we build cool things in small bite-sized chunks. Today, we are going to create an autocomplete dropdown using pure vanilla JavaScript, no frameworks, no libraries, just core web skills. One quick note, this won't have a traditional dropdown arrow or a visible list when the input is empty. Suggestions will appear only when you start typing, similar to how a search bar works, super lightweight and intuitive. So let's dive straight in. So here we are in Visual Studio Code where I created a new folder and created a new file called autocomplete dropdown.html. You can use any editor of your choice, but I love Visual Studio Code. So here we are. So since we are in Visual Studio Code and we are editing a file with .html extension, all we need to do is type HTML and select the second entry to create a basic boilerplate. All we have to do is give it a title. and we are done with our boilerplate. Next, we are going to write the CSS directly in a styles tag. So note, to keep this video short and focused, we are putting everything that is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into one single HTML5. In a real world app, you would separate things properly into separate files. And we cover all that in our yet another full stack development playlist. Check that out if you are interested. So I'm going to type the style tag now, and you can pause and copy if interested. All right, that was our styling. So note that we are keeping the CSS very simple here. The body has a light background and padding so everything isn't stuck to the edges. The input field has padding and a readable font size and we have set its width to 300 pixels so it doesn't stretch too wide. For the suggestions box, we give it a border and a white background so it looks like a dropdown. We set a max height, which means it won't grow endlessly if there are a lot of suggestions. And we added overflow y auto, so if the list gets too tall, it scrolls instead. We also removed the default bullet points with list style none and styled each suggestion with some padding and a pointer cursor. Finally, we added a subtle background color on hover, so it's easy to see which item you're about to click. If you didn't get any part of this, let me know in comment and I'll explain this. Let's focus our attention on the body element now. And we start by introducing a heading. Next, we add the input field and list. The unordered list will hold our dropdown suggestions. Now let's add our JavaScript inside a script tag. And again, note we are adding it here at end of the body element, so everything is available to be manipulated when our script runs. Again, keeping it simple and focused on the task and avoiding unnecessary detail. Here's our sample dataset, a list of fruit names we'll use for suggestions. Next, let's define variables representing our input and suggestions list element by using the ID attribute. Here we go, we grabbed references to the input box and the suggestion list using their IDs autocomplete and suggestions here. Next, I'm going to add an event listener to the input element. So whenever the user types something, we want to run some logic. So I'm going to add an event listener for the input event. So here we take the current input, convert it to lowercase, and clear any existing suggestions. If there is nothing typed, just stop right there. Otherwise, let's continue. We filter the fruit list to only those that include the type text. Note that some users have a different use case where they want the suggestions to start with the type content, for which case you would use starts with instead of includes in this statement. Right now we are going to stick with includes. So here for each match, we create a list item with the fruit's name. If the user clicks on a suggestion, We'll fill the input and clear the list. All is left to do is add the newly suggested list item to the list itself. And we are done with the code. So let's test, uh, sorry, I see I made a little mistake here. This should have been 
present here. Sorry about that. Okay, let's give it a try. So saving the file, opening it in browser, and here's our web page. Let's try it. So let's say if I try type the letter A, we see apple, apricot, avocado, and banana as well because banana contains the letter A. And now let's try B. Banana, blackberry, blueberry, perfect. I'm going to try P as well, pine, pineapple. And if I try apple, we see both apple and pineapple, right? Uh, remember the starts with thing I told you. If you want to see the suggestion list, starting with whatever you have typed so far. So let's try clicking something. So if I select pineapple, I see horrible choice of color here. We need to fix that. It's not working, so let's check what mistake did we make. The problem should be around this area, and it's not formatted well. Yeah, okay. Here's the first problem. I misspelled input, and for the next one, it shouldn't have been black. It should have been, let's say, light gray. Okay, let's reload and give it a try. So if I type A, it's much better. And if I select avocado, it gets selected. If you'd like to build on this, try loading the list from a server or even adding keyword navigation with arrow keys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the JavaScript Byte, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. All we have to do is give it a title and we are done.